Hey, I'm Bob at I Like To Make Stuff. Today we're gonna make a leather guitar strap. I started playing guitar when I was in high school. When I got my first guitar, I also got this guitar strap. I still use it today and it still works fine, but honestly, I would just like more than one. Since I'm here at the house trying to make projects with what I have on hand, I've got some leather and I've got some time, so I figured I'll make a duplicate guitar strap that I can use on a different guitar. Let's do it. I say duplicate and I don't really mean an exact duplicate, but I do want to use this as a reference, both in the length and the width, and I also want to make it function the same way. This one is actually two separate pieces and they're just wrapped together. That makes it really cool because there's no hardware, there's no buckles that you have to worry about. So basically I'm going to take this, take some measurements from it, and then sketch out a design really similar but using these same features. I've got it basically traced out here, just all squared off. There's no detail to it at all. And I noticed by looking at the original strap that there's a little divot right here. And when I laid that on my shoulder, I found that that's exactly where my shoulder lies. And so I've marked where that is on my template. And I'm gonna widen that space out a little bit so there's just a little bit more leather in contact with my shoulder. Other than that, I'm gonna just kind of change the shape a little bit so it's not quite so straight. But then I'm gonna cut this out and get it ready to transfer to the leather. I've been using this same piece of leather for quite a while and I've still got quite a bit of it left. I'm just trying to be really careful about where I cut pieces out so I have the largest pieces to work with in the future. I see a side down here that I can easily fit both of these templates on and then I'll have a little bit of scrap left over I can use for something else. I've got the templates laid out here and the next step is really just to trace them out with a pencil and cut them out with a box cutter. You can use fancier knives if you want to, but a box cutter actually works really well as long as the blade is sharp. Now once I get that traced out, before I take the template off, I'm also going to use an ice pick. And I'm going to use this to mark some of the holes for where these little slots need to be cut out. I want to make the holes in the leather so that once I take the template off, I know where I need to cut out those little sections. Now that I've got these pieces roughly cut out, the next step is to cut those little slots that I was talking about. And I've got the tiny little holes here. I'm not sure if they show up on camera. There's probably a very specific punch that you could buy that would let you make these holes and maybe even connect them in a single punch, but I don't have that. So I'm gonna use this. This is a hole punch that you use to make a hole for a snap or a rivet to go into. I'm just gonna put it to the largest size and punch the holes. Then I'll go back and connect those holes with the straight cut with the blade. My original idea here was to go back and just cut a little slot between these. That way they could open up if they needed to, but there wouldn't be a big gap in case I didn't use one of those holes. But then I did something different on this one and I actually opened it up completely and I like this a lot better. So I think I'm gonna go back and actually cut in between both sides of the circles and make all of these actual slots. 
We're just about ready to put some dye on the leather, which I'm really excited about. But before that, we need to go through with an edger and knock off the edge on the outside all the way around. This isn't absolutely necessary, but it's a really nice detail and makes the outside edge not be quite so sharp. I've got those pieces edged and laid out here on some wax paper, so the next step is just to put on some dye. I'm gonna use the walnut dye, I've used this a lot. The other strap that I have is black, so I may as well do brown for this one, just so they're a little bit different. So I'm just gonna do an even coat with a foam brush and probably do the front and the back since the back of this is pretty light. The dye's been on for a couple of hours. It's soaked in pretty well. And so now we're gonna seal up this outside edge by using some gum tragacanth. You put this on with a little dauber. You put it on just the exposed edge. Then you go back with a burnishing tool and rub it. It seals up that grain and makes it nice and smooth. It really gives it a finished look, but it also protects the edge from fraying and falling apart over time. With the wax on, this thing looks really good, and it's essentially done, except for one thing. I forgot to cut a hole right here, so I'm gonna use a drill to actually drill a quarter inch hole here, and that will be for the nut of the guitar to go through, so it can actually hook onto the guitar. To mirror the other strap that I have, it actually has a hole and then a little bit of a slit, just to give it, I guess, the flexibility to open up bigger if it needs to, so I may end up doing that. But now that I'm looking at it, I think it actually needs something else. So I think I may end up putting this thing in the laser, or maybe stamping a design on it. I'm not exactly sure yet, but I wanna figure something out before I put it on the guitar. Guitar. So here it is, the finished guitar strap. Now this was a really easy project and you don't need any special tools and it doesn't take very long. I was filming it and it took me three hours to make this. So if I wasn't filming it, it would have happened way quicker. The only thing that really takes any time is waiting for the dye to dry. The brand I put on this didn't really work quite as well as I liked, but overall I'm super happy with this. In case you wanna make your own exactly like this, I'm gonna make a digital template of it that you can print out and then trace onto your leather or whatever other material you wanna use for a guitar strap. I'll put a link to that down below and on the website. We've got tons of other types of videos that you may want to check out if you haven't seen them and if you're not subscribed do that as well now every time i show a guitar on this channel people ask why i don't play it and it's usually not relevant to the project but since people always ask that's it for this one thanks for watching we'll see you next time i started playing guitar when i was in high school and when i got my first guitar guitar the next step is to make those little slots that i was the wrong end. The finished trap. Now this was an extreme strap. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I was recording.